Mm. Welcome, everyone. Good to see you there, Cecilia Smith. How about it for Cecilia Smith on the vibraphone, everybody? Thank you very much. And we have Lafayette Harris Jr. on piano. Ah, thank you very much. And today we are presenting and talking about the month of November being Arts and Health Month. All right, 2024. Here you November. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Well, we truly believe that the arts have the power to benefit communities by engaging people in programs and aimed at prevention and wellness. That's right, to create safer, more supportive healthcare environments. And, and to offer caregivers an opportunity for creativity and self-expression. That's right, self-expression. And as jazz musicians, we are gonna start with the blues. Very apropos. All right, and so we should probably define the blues, right? Yeah, let's talk about a little explanation of the blues. A lot of things to say about that. What do you think, Cecilia? Of course, of course. And um, the thing is, the blues have the emotion uh, to express it generally. Most people think of sadness, right? Yeah, a little bit of melancholy, a little sadness. But the blues is a genre that really embodies the full spectrum of emotions. Absolutely. From melancholy to joy. From despair to hope. That's right. And we're going to start with an original composition by Lafayette Harris Jr. Oh, all right. One of my pieces. One yes. of your pieces. It's called Blues for HP. Who's HP? Mr. Houston Person. I'm thinking that this would capture the spirit of the down-home flavor that is generally associated with the blues and, and this character of a fella who I get to play for quite often. Yeah, I think it reflects his character. Absolutely. And who is Houston Percy? He's one of our leading saxophonists of of today, and he's uh, about to celebrate his about to celebrate his ninetieth birthday. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and he's still playing. Playing hard and well. Yep. So here we go, Cecilia. Right. There you go. I'm ready. All right. Here we go. You got it. Thank you. 
From the blues, which you cannot lose, with to what? Love, right? We're going to love because sometimes that often causes the blues, right? Uh, I've heard something, something like that. Sometimes. Sometimes it does. Yes, yes, uh huh. But we are going to actually talk about love in its most positive sense. Okay. When it's working for you. That's right, that's right. It feels right. good. It feels good when it's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so we we, we 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 got a couple of pieces by some great composers, right? Rogers and Hart. Yes, yes, two of the all-time great um, uh, writers uh, and the Tim Pan Al Tim Pan Alley writers, mm -hmm. and um, so they have these two pieces called "I Could Write a Book" and "Isn't It Romantic." That's right. And um, we're using the uh, the thing called a metaphor. That's right, grammar. Uh, metaphor means what? It's like figure of speech, and it compares unrelated things for rhetorical effect. That's right. In mm -hmm. this case, I could write a book. Literally means writing a book. But in terms of this rhetorical and what effect that we want yes. for what the writers and composers meant by this. Yes. Uh huh. What do they mean? They mean this is a. It's like uh, um. Your love and my love is so powerful that I can sit up and write a book about it. That's right. You know, I've never written a book and probably never will. And that, <laughs> well, you never know. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> you never know. But this, in terms of the mental health effect of writing a book, it can be mm -hmm. very releasing. That's right. Things of people who have experienced, you know, different trials and tribulations. But in this case, it's mm -hmm. a very positive thing because it is dealing with someone who feels so special about someone yeah. that they want to write a book about them. Yeah, and yeah, and like you say, it could be very releasing, just like the blues. Just like the like blues. Like a cathartic event. <laughs> That's right. But we're not singers, so we're going to make that effect through our expression, through the melody. You know the words to these songs already. Well, anyway. depending on how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> 40 and old. Okay. <laughs> and if you're a musician, go check out the words because it'll help you express it, right? That's right. Thank you. 
That's right. We're going mm -hmm. back to the blues feeling. We're going feeling. back to the blues feeling. We're interspersing the blues through today's show because uh, to us, it's the main element of, of feeling in American music. That's right. You know? Rather be rock and roll or just plain old blues. That's right. Or, uh, jazz. or that's right. A blues like Down Home Blues, like B.B. King. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, so... Jazz also is expressive uh, as blues as well. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do a pretty noted blues uh -huh. called All Blues by Miles Davis. But we also are talking about uh, and leaving you with some of the lyrics that were created by... Oh, the wonderful Mr. Oscar Brown Jr. That's right. That's right. He created words uh, to this that gives a universal understanding of what the blues I love what he's got here. Mm, yeah, tell us about it. Yeah, this is from the second verse. Some blues are sad, and some are glad. Mm -hmm. Dark and sad, or bright, bright and, and glad. glad, we're all blues. All shades, all hues, all blues, all blues. That's right. Oscar Brown Jr. Mm -hmm. With the melody by Miles Davis. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here we go. And this is from the one of the great albums of all time. Oh yeah, we we can't leave that out, can we? That's right. Might be the top selling jazz record of all time. Kind of blue. Kind of blue. Miles Davis. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. All right, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
right, all blue. I feel good about that, Cecilia. Oh, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Oh, my yes. goodness. Mm -hmm. Yes. All blue. <laughs> all shades, all hues, all blue. That's right. For anybody that's feeling any kind of way. Right? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. All of us. That's all of us. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so now we're going, we're going to go back to the love thing, huh? Well, love when it's not going so well. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, this is a classic Duke Ellington piece, right? That's right, man. Can't do it, you know, got to put some Duke Ellington in everything we do. Absolutely. That's right. Because mm -hmm. he was not only the most historical, one of the most historical uh, composers and musicians. Mm hmm he really wrote some incredible pieces of music. They are some incredible pieces of music. Mm -hmm, yep. You mm -hmm. just go on down the list, you know, from Satin Doll to The Only Thing You Think Got That Swing. Um, yep. Um, and, and and this, in terms of the title, mm -hmm. is really fitting for our, our Art and Health Month. Okay. Because another, the title is cathartic. That's because right. Because we're expressing something that's not happening for us right now. It or is. in a moment of love when it's not going so well. Right, right, when it's not going so well. That's and the right. title, the full title it is what? I got it bad and, and that, that ain't good. good. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh huh, mm -hmm. uh huh. And they used to say the word ain't ain't no word. <laughs> 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 but I don't think I agree. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh -huh. When it means to express something that, uh, you know, does mean something and love gone wrong is something that we hope that human beings. It's almost important to experience it sometimes so we know and how to get out of it. So often it's very good to express ourselves when love is not going so hard well. That's right. Uh-huh. And this is how this is going to help you. This That's song, right. this song, this word, look these words up. It's going to help you. We won't you won't be singing it. Well, not singing, but melodically. Yeah. We'll sing. It. Music has that way too. Okay. You don't necessarily have to sing it. You can just feel it. That's right. Okay. All right. So here we go. I got it bad. And that ain't good. Hit it.
All right, Lafayette. Right. Yeah, that was a nice romantic ballad. Romantic love gone wrong. Yes. Uh-huh. But now we're going into what kind of love? I think you call it imaginary love. Imaginary love. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great song. I love the songs by Denise Williams. That's right. It's called Silly. Mm -hmm. And it's when um, love becomes so prominent in one person's mind that they start imagining all kinds of things that are not happening. All right. So if you are a big Denise Williams fan, you will know these words. Okay. All right, so this is silly. Yes. Love when it's imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right.
because we are talking about Art and Health Month. That's right. We'd like to leave you with a good feeling from this piece taken from what musical? The Roar of the Grease Paints and the Smell of the Crowd. That's right. And you would think it would be reversed. Should be, right? Should be. Mm -hmm. We discovered in our research that they <laughs> reversed instead of the roar of the crowd and the smell of the grease paint, that they, they uh, titled it The Roar of the Grease Paint and the Smell of the Crowd because of the theater experience, all right. uh, which I find to be a little humorous. But that's all right. A lot of, lot of famous pieces came from, a uh, few pieces of music came from this musical. And this one piece is called Feeling Good. Yeah. I, we should say something about the initial intention of this song. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and it was to bring hope and black resilience to the forefront. Which and was part of the 
uh, premise of the musical, not the whole thing, yes, but the premise of the musical mm -hmm. was done during the 60s. Yes. And then Nina Simone came and put her own stamp on it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And this song was sung, I think, by the only black actor in this in in that, the cast. And then that musical, you know, mm -hmm. in that musical, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can actually find it online, that old version of that piece. Well. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's very interesting. Um, to hear what they did for this musical, mm -hmm. but then to hear what Nina, Nina Simone, Simone did with this. Put her stamp on it. We're going to try to We're gonna try. emulate some Nina. We're going to throw some Nina-isms up there. That's right. All right. All right, so we got it. <laughs>
feeling good. All right. Yes. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Lafayette. Mm-hmm.